Kyler Murray, is he going to be the MVP of the league? You put it there in your feed, so I'm just I wondering. did. Well, well, it's, we're, in, we're in campaign season there. I had one transition in mind, but that's a good one, though, because we're in campaign season, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and so, context. So, Nuck is, of course, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, who tweeted uh, Kyler Murray for MVP. But then, uh, yesterday, the day's the 29th, so yesterday, Fox Sports uh, tweeted a graphic who will be MVP, and they included the usual suspects, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, reigning MVP Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, right? And um, Arizona's Twitter account, probably my man Mark Dalton, uh, replied, interesting. <laughs> you know, and so the campaign yeah. is underway for Kyler Murray, who I know you're a betting man, was interesting, is... Uh, the percentage of the handle uh, through week seven, 17 percent of the money being bet is Russell Wilson. Second highest at 12 percent after week seven is Kyler Murray. In terms of the money, you know, it's like because his odds are he's, he's getting plus 2000 right now, I believe, MVP odds. So I know you're a betting man, but what I think he got he got in his favor after that game that we talked to with Dr. Johnson earlier, that game where he outdueled Russell Wilson in overtime. And there you can see that his stats compare favorably to the guy that won MVP last year. Of course, he's not being measured against that this year. It's, you know, what he's measured against Russell Wilson and Tom Brady and, and others. But my point is, um, there's a narrative and there's some momentum and there's some hype around Kyler Murray especially with what he's yeah. doing on the ground. I mean, you know, if he if, if he gets 16 rushing touchdowns and runs for 1,000 yards, you know, he may not have tremendous efficiency numbers when it comes to passing, but if he puts up ridiculous numbers, and most important, and most important, Russell Wilson, whereas he had early in the year, he had that yeah. narrative of he's never gotten an MVP vote, so it's almost like a lifetime right. achievement award, Denzel Washington training day type thing, and he's doing great mm -hmm. this year, but if if the Cardinals fool around and win the NFC West, if they win the toughest division in football, now there's, there's something of a narrative for people to attach to when it comes to this Kyler Murray campaign. So it's possible. I'm, I, if I were a bet man, I would bet on Kyler Murray today. If you ask me, if it was my bet your money MVP edition, I bet on Kyler Murray right now with those odds. Tell me a story. Sit down. Tell me a story. <laughs> not your story. No, not your story. A story. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Don't listen. Don't give me stuff. Don't reference training day. Don't reference because that just totally throws me off. Yeah. Well, I thought you were going to say most important with Kyler Murray being MVP. You look at okay, Lamar Jackson. Those numbers are very comparable, and, and in many cases, better than Lamar Jackson's numbers. What's the big difference? Big difference. I believe Baltimore last year was fourteen and two, and they were the number one seed in the AFC. Mm -hmm. Now they lost in the playoffs to Tennessee, but they were the number one seed. So they go hand in hand. It's not just a great season. It's a great season along with, unfortunately, it works like this. That's why I said the NFC West. The really that's, why I, that's why I said the NFC West part of it. And I mean, look, but like I said, but, but also, beyond that, it's got to be better than the NFC West. It's got to be. Yeah, like, no, okay, because, let's say they because the over West. the NFC South. Yeah, but over the yeah. NFC South, there's a guy that just got, got Antonio Brady. Brown. And, you know, yeah. he's got a, 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 dare I say it about Tom Brady, a feel good story. You know, here's Brady going to Tampa, still at 43 years old. There's going to be a lot of momentum on his side as he as he asks his stats. But the reason I like the transition uh, between Mario Williams, Reggie Bush, and, uh, you know, the Kyler Murray topic is that I was so wrong. God, was I wrong. Because I was one of those people that was like, Steve Kime, who I know Steve and, and, and the Cardinals organization, I'm like, how do you draft a guy at number 10? Josh Rosen. How do you trade up to draft Josh Rosen? And your coach, you thought you thought so much of your head coach, Steve Wilkes, that you fired him after one season. One so year. you fired a coach, you got a terrible offensive one line. One and done. Yeah. One and done. And your quarter, your, your first round, number 10 overall pick quarterbacks, one and done. Like give him a chance to succeed. Maybe I'll learn my lesson when it comes to Sam Darnold. So I didn't I didn't like the drafting of Kyler Murray number one overall. But hey, so I listen, I can admit when I'm wrong. You reserve the right to be stupid. I'll admit, I, I, I have no problem admitting when, I, when I'm wrong. Rare though it is, but I will admit my mistakes. Oh, yeah. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time.
on Peacock. Appreciate you.